Hey guys, Nick Layton here. Good to be back. It's been a while. Today, five underrated riffs of the 1980s. I'm covering five riffs. This is part one. I'm going to do a part two, part three, probably four. I mean, I love these kinds of riffs. And uh, I'm just going to pick some of the ones that have been overlooked a little bit, at least in general, I think. So I think you're going to enjoy this. Before we get started, make sure and check the link below to get your free Sweet Picking course, Sweet Picking Boot Camp if you're in the Chops, Malmsteen, Jason Becker, all that kind of cool stuff, many more. Get your free course, it's my gift to you, I think you're going to dig it. Um, Alright, let's get on to the riffs, I don't think there's anything else to say except rock on! <laughs> Cool. So if I haven't said so already, the tab for these five riffs is in the description below. This, uh, not every little nuance is on there. These are handwritten tabs. Just to give you the general idea of what's going on if you need a, a reference for any of these riffs. So refer to that. And um, these are just going to be a really quick, simple... Uh, fun breakdown of each riff. Not a ton of detail here. So let's just celebrate these riffs and have fun. So riff number one is The Morning After by Rat. And this was off of Out of the Cellar. And it uh, goes like this. <laughs> That's the basic thing. You have an E sus chord, and then you have this gallop. So you have, and then just an E major. Okay, so that's the, that's the key to this whole riff. Now we're gonna move to a G. This is pretty cool. It's a G um, in the bass note here on the third fret, but then. You're going to play this G power chord with, with your ring and pinky. And then lower the pinky one fret to get 5-6. So it goes from 5-7 on the D and G to 5-6 on the D and G. You get this. So again, kind of the gallop. And up to A. Same thing, but here we're playing 5-7. And we're playing an A in the bass. Okay, so that part stays the same. Um, fingering wise, I'm changing that up a little. Okay, and that's the basic riff. So all together you get. So there's a little bit different. Okay, so that's the end of it right before it goes to the verse. Now you're going to a C. And five and seven. Kind of reminds me of round and round a little bit. Five and seven on the G and B strings. And then five and five on the B and G. Then move it up to D. Seven and eight, and then seven and seven. And that's it. I played a little bit of the verse part. 
but that's just for fun. So let's move on to the next riff. Number two, Turn On The Action from Tooth and Nail by Dawkin. Killer riff, kind of has that um, high tempo shuffle Van Halen kind of vibe to it. So let me break that down a little bit slowly for you. Key of A. Okay, so we're going to go right down the A minor scale basically starting from F. 10th fret, 3rd string. Again, refer to the tab. It'll take too long to break all these down with all the numbers. Just check the tab out and I'll just kind of play this slow. Second part. Okay, next part. Okay, and that's just a tenth fret on the A, part of a G, kind of a G chord. We're playing 10, 7, 7 on the D and G, and then ending up on 8 on the A string. So, let me play up to there. Okay, then it starts over. Okay, and then this part leads into the diminished thing, so... It's basically a C chord, 5th fret on the D and G, right into this. Okay, very cool sliding diminished thing. Um, sliding into 10 on the D, so 10, 13B, 11G, so this shape keeps repeating three frets higher. 16, 14, 13, 19, 17, 16, 22, 20, 19. Final uh, little double stop here is 19 and 20. Um, on the B and high E string. And then right back into the riff. And that's it. I went a little farther into the verse, but it's basically the same riff all the way through. And that's a blast to play. A little challenging to up tempo, so have fun with that. January day be without your coffee. Ah, oh, it says most awesome teacher. I wonder who that's for. Hmm. Well, I don't know. One of my students got me that. Very cool. I don't know if it's true, but I'll take it where I can get it. Um, next riff, Riot. Not the band Riot, but the song Riot by the band Blue Murder. And of course, I'm talking about John Sykes. Badass John Sykes, one of my favorite guitar players. Uh, by the way, I did a 11 Riffs You Gotta Know by John Sykes video tutorial. I'll put the link to that down below as well so you can check that out. This riff wasn't in there, so I thought it was a good one to do. Plus, 
as I said, these are kind of underrated riffs, and I think this is killer. Think about this is I'm not sure exactly where John plays this on the neck. I've seen some videos. It's a little hard to to make out. So I'm gonna do it my way, and then I'll show you a couple variations of. I've seen some tab and things like that that have different ways to play it, and they all sound pretty good. But this is what feels comfortable to me. So what we have is the open D string. So we're playing uh, we're playing this. That's the basic idea. And of course, John loves to do all these slides. That kind of thing. So add those in. But basically, it's uh, lots of vibrato on the chords. Okay, that's an F. C, F. Okay, now this is the part where I'm not sure um, I've seen this. Or, but that could be it. Um, the video I've seen of John, it looks like he's playing it up here. And then coming down here. Which seems kind of strange, but you know, as guitar players, we all have our quirks and little things that we do. Um, I think it sounds fine here. If you want to try it here, the tabs that I've seen mostly play. I just like this. Okay, and then you repeat. A sliding thing there, which is really cool. Five, six, up to seven, eight, back to five, six, and back. Seven. The really cool thing is this little sliding thing he does. So in context, let me play it slow. You catch that? Now again, on the fingering on this, I'm not totally sure how John does it, but kind of a sliding sixth kind of idea. Okay, so. Let's play that like that. Any, uh, any way you want to do it. Um, that's the whole riff at the end of this. I just added that in because it's a very sexy thing to do. It's a double picking. Okay, it's not, I don't think it's actually in the song, but I liked it. It's cool. Thank you, John, for the badass riffs. Let's move on. Tikro from the band TNT. This song is called Last Summer's Evil. And um, this was on the first album, Nights of the New Thunder. Just a great album, that one, and Tell No Tales, I think. And the next one after that, I think it was called Intuition. Those three records were absolutely killer, but this is off the first one. Always love this riff. It's pretty simple. I will say, on the demo that I did, I played it differently than I'm playing it now. So I'll show you both ways. I think I just kind of messed around with it and discovered an easier way to do it for myself. Again, I have not seen any video of Ronnie doing this, so I don't really know what he's doing, but uh, as far as the uh, fingering of it, but the notes are there. So you can decide how you'd like to do it. Here's how I played it on the demo. <laughs> Okay, so it has a 
does this. It's got kind of a stretch there between the ring and the pinky. Which is, you know, not the most comfortable thing in the world to play. So what I did, um, just kind of messing around with this, I thought to myself, how could you play that a little differently? And I got this. Oops. I mean, to me that feels a lot more comfortable. So the the way um, that I tabbed it is this way. And you'll notice too, there's a lot of muting going on on that part. Yeah, one of Ron, big part of Ronnie's style was the muting on the lead stuff too. But this riff would sound wrong if you just didn't do the muting if you went. That's just all kinds of wrong, so we don't want to do that. And then during the verse part, there's a chord. This is just a D sus four chord. Going into the bridge. It's a C chord there, and that's where I left off. All right, hope you like that one. One of my favorites. Last riff coming up. number five of the underrated 80s riffs part one there will be more I wanted to include a riff from a new band that I'm in it's not a new band but it's new for me the band is Q5 from Seattle and they had the classic metal album in 1984 called steal the light and if you don't have that please check it out it's a great album it's revered by a lot of metalheads, and I get to play in the band now, so it's a great thing for me, too. Um, the legendary Floyd Rose, not the tremolo system itself, but the guy, Floyd Rose, who created this, is the original guitar player in Q5, so it's very cool on that level as well. But um, it's an honor for me to be in the band, and so I wanted to include it because I think they are criminally overlooked. This riff is really simple, so it's not like we're trying to reinvent the wheel here, but it's just got such a great groove to it. And it's probably the most popular tune for Q5 called Steal the Light. And it goes like this. <laughs> Okay, 
that's basically the main riff I wanted to show you. I did include some other parts and even tabbed those, so I'll show you those here in a sec. But all this is, is you're going between the low E chugs and a C power chord and a D power chord. That's it. The beauty and the genius of it is the space that it creates and the vibe that it creates um, in these chords. It kind of has a, a, a powerful epic feel to it. And the little variations in the chugs really make it work. And those chord stabs. So basically just an E power chord, chugging on a C, B, C. Right before the chorus, up to D, and then the chorus is just right down this right down the uh, scale here so E D C and B up to D to end it right before it says turning darkness into light which is always a great thing to do a uh, little side note that in the band, we actually play this down a whole step now, so it's actually in the key of D, or we could use a drop D there too, so it's really heavy. Um, even more epic than the original version, I think. So anyway, great riff. It's an honor to be in the band. It's cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Q5 needs more love. Okay, cool. So I'm going to end this now again. Sweet picking course, free underneath. John Sykes riffs, what else, tab underneath, all that cool stuff, part one. And if you do me a favor, let me know what your most underrated 80s metal riff is, and maybe I'll do it in the next installment in part two. So anyways, thank you guys. It's good to be back. See you soon. Rock on.